Hello and welcome to In the Cool of the Day. I am Tia Young, your host, and we have a great interview for you today. Please join me in welcoming Apostle James and Apostle Clara Ravenel of the Agape Outreach International Ministries in the Virginia Beach and Norfolk areas. Together, Apostle James and Apostle Clara also established the Agape Outreach Ministries and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Yokosuka and Nagishi, Japan. Now, I have to admit that this is the first time that I have had the honor and pleasure of meeting a husband-wife apostle team. And I'm really excited to hear them talk about their work in Japan and here in the United States. Our discussion topic for today will be about Christians being in alignment with God's word. So please join me in welcoming the apostles. Hello, how are you doing today? Fine, doing thank, great. You to thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you, I hope you didn't have too much uh, of a trouble getting here from Virginia Beach area. No, it was, uh, it was okay other than an accident on 95, but uh, God opened up the airways and uh, we- And you're here. We're here. <laughs> okay, yes. very good. And I did what I normally do, sleep. sleep. You went to sleep, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, you know, you both are apostles and you have uh, different ministries. And I'm interested to find out what are the differences in your ministries and where do they align or mm -hmm. do they align? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, for me, my um, ministry that the Lord have placed in me years ago is um, Treasure Ministries. And what Treasure Ministry is, is a birthing place to help birth out ministries that the Lord have placed in His people. Oftentimes we find out that that individual may not know what God called them to do. I may not even know, now what? And so with laboring with them, just like naturally you have a midwife mm -hmm. in a delivery room, uh, coaching, right. tell them to push, when to push, when to rest. Right. And in the spirit, that's what the Lord have called me to do as well. Tell them when to push, when to rest. Okay, time to move, don't sit on that baby. <laughs> Let's push that baby out. Uh -huh. And I found out that many, often time, that they will be right at the birth, at the place of giving birth, and they get afraid, yeah. spiritually, of uh, pushing right. because of the unknown. Right, that's right. So I sit in the corner, I sit beside them, and say, come on, son and daughter, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of your destiny. Come on, let's push. You got to give birth to this baby, uh -huh. because the kingdom of God is waiting for it, as well as the brothers and sisters, the people that the Lord would have you to touch. It's waiting for your ministry. Right. So treasure ministry, and we go um, deep into the um, the dirty places, as Crocodile Dundee does. Right. <laughs> you know, look for the treasures, you know, the hidden treasures in the earthen vessels. So you're like a spiritual coach. That's, yes. That's what you think of, a spiritual coach. Yes. That's beautiful. Yes, and um, so it, is, it has its challenges, but above all, I bless God and I thank God for choosing me to be a person that he can count on and trust his people to. So basically that's what treasure ministry is, is to help birth out the hidden treasures that God have put in his people and let them know that you can do it. Oh. That's because so someone else is waiting on you to come forward. That's very true. Thank you. Thank you're, you for sharing that. You're welcome. Apostle James. And uh, <clears throat> my ministry, um, uh, about a year ago, I established uh, what we call Kingdom Vision International. Um, and Kingdom Vision International basically is a fellowship um, where we um, come together, whether it be uh, an apostle or bishops or pastors or uh, people who got to call into ministry, whether it be evangelists, our prophets, whatever it may be, uh, we come together and um, basically help strengthen one another, iron sharpening iron. Right. And so with my ministry, I am an encourager. Uh, I'm a builder. I'm one who uh, uh, encourages as well. She talked about her ministry, how it encourages. Uh, I am one that also help to push, help to encourage, to give them uh, strength to be able to move forward and advance mm -hmm. uh, in the kingdom uh, with their ministry. Um, also, our ministries uh, intersect um, at a place where she's 
help them to push and help them to birth and I come in and help them to align with the body so that their ministry can be effective and efficient to do what God has called it to do. Uh, it's amazing how um, so many ministries are, um, I won't even say not effective and not efficient, but they don't know how to work with other ministries in That's the true. body. They don't know how to work with the fivefold uh, ministry. True. And so I help them to be able to uh, find their place in the body, in the fivefold, and be able to work it uh, effectively and efficiently. So basically she push them forth to birth and I take them in and continue to point and direct oh, on what wonderful. direction to go and how to walk with the other part of the fivefold ministry. Right, that's wonderful. Um, as you were talking, I was thinking of uh, something that I think um, just, I don't know, it loses people sometimes Christians uh, in understanding um, the biblical definition of an apostle and the fivefold ministry gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there have been some that have said, actually, this is what I was taught and what I have believed, and I need you to correct me, you guys to correct me if I'm saying it wrong, is that when uh, God assigns uh, an apostolic um, anointing mm -hmm. on someone, that at any point they could walk in any of those fivefold ministries as God wills. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand that. They don't understand that sometimes a person, uh, maybe when they're talking to you, they're talking to you as a builder. Mm -hmm. right. But then next week when you see them, mm -hmm. they may be um, in a prophetic call right, or right. you know, in one of the other. Could you talk a little bit more about sure, that? Sure. I would really appreciate um, that. Now, nowadays, uh, or shall I say some time ago, um, all you heard about was bishops. Um, that's all you heard. And then all of a sudden the um, the apostles' ministry began to uh, surface and to rise. Mm -hmm. And now you see those who were once bishops, they're now becoming apostles. Why? Because they was doing the apostolic work in the first place. Oh. They were already doing the work. They just did not have, they was not in that office in order to really function in that office because somewhere, some along the line, someone assigned them or called them a bishop and they embraced it and ran with it. But when they came into the understanding that the work that they was doing was an apostolic work uh, and that they were really builders, uh, they were really apostles, and now they're taking that on. And so we see a lot of that now um, coming in in the past five, six years where you start to hear more and more now people who uh, are uh, taking on the office or stepping into the office as uh, an apostle. Um, biblical terms of an apostle is a sent one, someone who is sent. Um, we are dignitaries from one kingdom uh, to go do a work, uh, to be a representative uh, of the kingdom of God. And so basically uh, an apostle is one who have been sent. And uh, as apostles we have, we have to understand what our call is uh, in the body of Christ. Every apostle doesn't necessarily have a church. Uh, if you look at the uh, background in the, in the scripture, every one of those uh, 12 apostles didn't necessarily uh, establish a church, but they were called apostles uh, because they were sent. And some of them were support, and some of them were builders, and some of them went to dig out, you know, right. but uh, they all were called apostles. And so we have, have to understand what our actual call is mm -hmm. uh, in the body of Christ so that we don't get into a place where we shouldn't be and where we'll be able to uh, effectively operate in our ministry to help support the rest of the body uh, when it comes to the fivefold ministry, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And we heard that so often uh, in the past that uh, even in Ephesians 5, um, where to talk about the fivefold ministry, uh, the apostle is staged first, but it doesn't mean that they're first. Uh, it simply means that we have have to work together to accomplish the total work of the kingdom of God that God has given us to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Apostle James and Apostle Clara, is there an age limit on that? Because I'm seeing um, young people, mostly men, um, 19 and 20 years old, mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. saying that they're apostles. And, and I'm thinking that, this is just me, I'm mm -hmm. thinking, okay, God may have that calling on your life, but you're so young, yes. yet have you experienced enough? And I'm thinking what you said about working with people, birthing them and mm -hmm. helping them 
know that, okay, you may have this call, but you know, young man, young lady, mm -hmm. you're, you're not ready yet. Am I, am I off base mm -hmm. by saying that? No, I don't think you are, and because we've seen the same thing as well. Um, apostle as well as bishop, you know, you know and I would ask this, them the same question, what experience do you have? Um, who lay hands on you? You know, who caused you to run before time? Because I believe that if we try to lay hands on an empty head and expect for them to fly, but they don't have the wings to fly, then they'll find themselves hitting them, find themselves running into walls because they don't have, it takes years, it takes experience. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. And I believe today that in the body of Christ that people may think that it's a, a fashion, it's a beautiful place to be at, right. but they don't even understand the weight the weight that have to be that you have to carry in that office, hmm. because you gonna have to go through. You have to be proven. God gonna prove you as well. Yes. And um, and I, my thought is the same thing. It's in the same area, Re um, as well. Is that are you were you sent out prematurely? Yes. Who birthed you? Who parent you? Who fathered you? Without journey. Um, in this area and I walk in where we where the Lord have established us in the apostle. I started working in ministry when I was thirteen years old. Developing programs, developing things, you know, for the young people in the church when I was young myself. But I never ran behind a title, the doors were over God, He will establish everyone. So when He established a thing, I think it will come to pass. But I think it's robbery to the people, to the young people, when we send them out at such an early age. Right. And then when they come back wounded, yes. then we want to ask, well, so why? Right. What's wrong with you? Yes. What did you do that wasn't right? right. No, who sent them out there? And then are they able to go back up? Uh, are they able to come in mm -hmm. to get the necessary healing? to get the necessary strength that they, you know, things which they need because of what happened. Right. Well, we're going to take a short break. Okay. We're going to be right back with In the Cool of the Day and our special guest. So don't touch that dial. Hi, I'm Earl Workman of All Nations Church of God. My family and I watch In the Cool of the Day every week. Come on and join us. A breeze is always flowing. Welcome back. You're watching In the Cool of the Day with our special guests, Apostle James and Apostle Clara Ravenel. Our topic for today focuses on the role of Christians being in alignment with today's church. So we're going to pick up where we left off um, uh, with you guys talking about uh, sometimes just being out of alignment makes all the difference in the world in what's going to happen in that ministry. That's right. So That's please, right. please continue. Okay. I, wanted to, I wanted to share and kind of pick up where um, Apostle Clara left off sure. um, concerning the age limit when dealing with uh, uh, young men in apostleship and in the bishopric. Um, uh, one of the things the scripture says that um, a bishop cannot be a novice. Yes. And so uh, also the same as an apostle. Uh, you're constantly teaching, you're constantly training, you're constantly pouring in to the people of God uh, to help them to reach their destination that God has um, ordained for their lives. And when you are only pouring in from your book knowledge mm. and not some experience right. added with that, that's, that's all right. they'll have right. is book knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, as Apostle said, you know, she's been in ministry for a long time. I've been in for a long time, not as long as she have, um, mm -hmm. because I came to the Lord in my, in my early 20s. Um, and uh, God really had acceler uh, accelerated me very fast, very rapidly through the, uh, through the ranks. But um, even with that, I've gained a lot of experience. Um, started uh, actually as a lay leader uh, in the Reformed Episcopal Church, um, with actually at the church that she was at. Uh, got married in- Is that uh, where you guys met? Yeah, no, we met in no, high, we school met year. high school year. High school, different school, yeah. different, wow. different township. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so it's amazing because, um, you know, God has a way of just developing you 
when you when your heart is set to do his will mm -hmm. uh, not really knowing what the will of God was just wanted to work in ministry just wanted to work in church wasn't looking for a title or uh, none of that you know and when God called me to pastor uh, in Japan I was like God I don't wow, know how to pastor you know Japan and, wow that yeah. is something and at that moment God just began to run the reel back um, in our early years where she and I had, uh, we've always had a house full of young people that would come and just sit at our feet and eat our food and, you know, just be in our presence. What, what were you doing in Japan, if I might ask? Uh, I mean, I, were you in the military? Active or? duty Navy. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Yep. And you both were in the, in the military? No. Or? He, was, he was active duty. Yeah, I was active duty. Okay. She was active wife. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And, uh, you know, going through that Being process. Being a mom to everybody. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because exactly. Exactly right. there you were um, uh, young people who left, you know, high school, mm -hmm. graduate high school rather, right. went in the military, first duty station after leaving home was Japan. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so it was, it was amazing just to see what God did there with us. And, you know, starting up a ministry overseas is, is can be pretty... I know I, I, that that you guys are going to have to come back. I hope you will <laughs> then come back to tell us about that because yeah. I think that yeah. is so uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I I don't think I know of anyone personally mm. uh, that has has really done that yeah. um, that I can speak of. Yeah. If I can if I can if I can just put a word out there for yes, the uh, for the leaders and for the apostles please, uh, that's please. out there, um, please be careful at laying your hands on God's people and sending them out because that responsibility becomes your responsibility mm. because you're sending them out to do a work mm. for the kingdom, but they'll go out and not have the experience to deal with certain issues, certain people, and you harm them, mm -hmm. you know? And then that's held on your hand, that blood is mm. on your hand. So yes. be careful that, you know, Jesus. telling people and te uh, calling them apostles and bishops and whatnot, and then sending them out there. Is they that like sheep going, being sent out before to, time, uh, before time, before the wolves yes. and to yes. be slaughtered? Yes, yes. That's, that yes. is an awesome uh, yes. responsibility. It is, yes, it is. because we have yes. seen the premature saint, the one that sent was sent out prematurely, mm. and then what ended up happening is they get the wound gets so deep that they don't trust anyone to come and help well, can, take care can, of them. Can you go a little deeper and just tell us if if a person is out there and out there too soon what kind of things will happen so that they will say wait a minute you know maybe I miss God I mean are there signs or things that will happen that will make you know that this you know you're, you're a little bit too quick out here or maybe like you said earlier even in the wrong office sometimes what, what we have experienced especially when we was over in Japan mm -hmm. we experienced um, a few being there and in the ministry, um, being able to identify the anointing, being able to identify, you know, hear, hear what's coming out of them, mm -hmm. have that spiritual ear to hear. And then when it's not right, then you try to sit them down mm -hmm. and teach them a more better way, a more excellent way of what they're doing. They will not listen to you. Oh. They will not hear, they will not adhere to nothing. And, um, and it would take, you know, it would, it's a lot of work to get them to listen, if you can get them to listen. But because we had encountered a young man while we were stationed there. He was a bishop, young, probably 18 years old. Mm. 18. Yeah, he had to be 18, 19 mm. years old, uh, probably more 19, was a bishop. And my question was, who ordained you? as a bishop at the age of 19. So then needless to say, he started having issues with me because I was asking him questions on your election and your calling. So come to find out, he ended up having problems with me that I didn't even know he had problems with me. And we had a service, we were having a revival over there, one of our, our father in the gospel, he had came to Japan and, and assist us with the work there. And um, this one particular night at the end of revival, we always leaving, packing up, leaving, going to the hotels, going home. And they 
your saints they got our attention as we was leaving and tell you know letting us know um, he can't move he's on the floor he can't move and um, so I went over to him he asked for me and um, so I went over to him I said son what's the problem he said do you know what it feel like to be paralyzed mm. I'm like no I don't know what it feel like he said I'm paralyzed he said, I can only talk, but I cannot move mm. none of my limb. And I'm saying, okay, God, what is this? And what he said was that I ran your name down. Oh, the person told you that. He told you. Oh. He said, I ran your name down, and I need you to release me. Oh. Because of what he did, God was about to take him down mm. that night. Mm. And I said to him, son, you have to do it God's way. He will establish you, but you have to do it God's way. Mm. And when he agreed to that, he jumped up off that floor like nothing was wrong with him and walked away. Oh mm. And our expression was, what in the world was that? Mm. But the power of God um, that rests upon us, uh, I'm not talking us, I'm talking those who God has called, Call. those who yes. we have sent. Um, people don't understand um, when the scripture says, touch not mine anointed, and neither do my prophet no harm. Yes. They don't understand that. And the fear of God is not there anymore. And so people will say what they want. They'll do what they want. They'll treat you any kind of way. But then it takes God to really mm -hmm. get their attention. Right. You know, it really does take God right. to get their attention. And so uh, even with that, with that young man, uh, when we talk about uh, alignment, Mm -hmm. We talk about the alignment of the body um, spiritually. Um, he's, he was out of a line. Yes. You know, yeah. somewhere down the line, whoever ordained him or called him a bishop never really took time and instructed him and taught him right. and trained him, you know, and more so really equipped him with what he needed to know in order to go out and do what he needed to do. So you know? we, need ment we need mentorship. Yes. I mean, yes. We need somebody yes. to be with us and not just going out mm -hmm. um, on your own. That's right. That's um, right. Things. That's right. And well, it, well, well, when people do have, uh, take exception with leaders in the church, is it better for them just to pray about it to God and not really, um, I mean, what is the proper way of handling that? Mm -hmm. uh, because some have said that you should go to the person and sit down and talk to them. But mm -hmm. after listening to what you said, maybe he just should have prayed uh, to God about it mm -hmm. and left it alone and not you know, to maybe let God show you. Right. If you had done something wrong, in that case you hadn't done anything wrong. <clears throat> but I, I've seen people often, um, you know, go full attack mm -hmm. with uh, leaders right. in the church. I see that often. And yes. I'm, I'm wondering um, that maybe it would be better just to pray about it. Yeah. It's, it's it. always, <clears throat> I believe, better to, uh, to pray about it because in praying about it, what God is going to reveal to us is us. Because a lot of time we'll say that person's the problem, this person the problem, you know. But God will say, well, what about you? Mm. You know, he'll say, what about you? Mm -hmm. Because we have to look internally first. Why is it that I'm having a problem with this person? Right. Why is it something that they've said that really rubbed me the wrong way? Or is it something in me that right. need to be corrected mm -hmm. that I need to pay attention to? Mm -hmm. okay. Because for the most part of it, that's really what it is. I've found out that when I've had a problem with someone, for the most part, it was something, because if somebody says something to me and it rubs me the wrong way, I have to check me first to see, okay, why am I responding and reacting toward this this way, you know? So it's a lot, a uh, lot of times, it's because of what's going on inside of us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and we have to deal with that, right. we really do. So yeah, it's better to pray about it and then get instruction from the mm -hmm. Lord, how to approach that individual, right. because Sometimes you can approach a person wrong, uh, in the wrong manner, and you get a not so good response. So, so, so persons that are in the fivefold ministry uh, gifts, they're constantly being pruned themselves. Yes. So it's not yes. just them always talking and telling mm -hmm. other people what That's to right. do. They're being pruned right. as well. God yes. is 
got to stick over them that's right. as well. Is that, right. is that right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Because and it hurt also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. like anyone else, the pruning. Sometimes mm -hmm. we, we want to resist it too, you know. Right, right. God, don't cut this portion, you know. Oh, yeah. Don't prune this portion. Yeah. It, yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same fact, you know, that he want the whole body to bear forth much fruit. Right, right. And then our fruit will remain with us. So he pruned us as well and with the pruning um, just like the Ouch. next we submit to it right. you know we'll continue to go and move faster through that through, through that process. process well we're almost out of time I'm gonna let the bishop uh, James have the last word and then I'll close <laughs> okay I wanted to, I wanted to say this um, when we're dealing with alignment um, I'm a mechanic um, by trade uh, not necessarily by trade but I just love to mess with cars because I was my dad taught me a working car since I was 10 years old but um, being in, a, in spiritual alignment have, is 30 seconds. <laughs> being in spiritual alignment is likened to a car that needs an alignment. Uh, it's out of alignment. You're going to eventually wear out your tires, okay. and that is the vehicle that gets you to where you need to go. Spiritually, we can't get to where we need to go if we're out of alignment. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. That is the last word. <laughs> Our time is up, and I want to thank Apostle James and Apostle Claire Ravenel for sharing their heart with us today. The role of an apostle is alive and well, and it is wonderful to see how God is working in the church today. We look forward to having Apostle James and Apostle Clara back in the studio real soon. If you have any questions about today's show, or if you would like to be interviewed by one of our hosts, please email me at skillstorock at gmail.com. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.